Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. What up? This is Robert Ory. Or three pointer. There is it. You might know me as Big Shot Bob. To Ory for three. Oh, unbelievable. This guy is off the charts. What's going on, Big Shot Bob? Robert Ory from Dallas. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Welcome to a new year. It is the Big Shot Bob podcast back for 2024. B Dog, Brandon Harper, I'm Rob Jenner. Is that, of course, seven time NBA champion coming into 2024 with a head of steam? Robert Ory. <laughs> I don't even know. How was your new year, man? What'd you guys do? Did you hang out? Did you, uh, did you go hit up to Travel. celebrity parties? Oh, that's right. You were in a. Yeah, you were in I H-Town. was in Portland. Oh, you were well, in no, Portland. You were in H-Town last H- time I talked to you. I went to H-Town, to Portland, to work, to home. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, Christian had a tournament. This is Les Schwab basketball tournament. It okay. was a really good tournament. You know, they, they lost on a last second put back by mm. one to Columbus, which is the Boozer Twins. Got it. Yeah. So gotcha. They lost by one, and it was a big controversy at the end of the game where we called a timeout, meaning Harvard Westlake. And at the May bucket, and after you call a timeout immediately, right? So you think you can run the baseline, but the rest was saying that we had inbounded it and we called a timeout. Therefore, we could not move. We were stationary. So this is a it, this is a huge, everybody was going bananas. We were yelling on the sideline. The coaches were yelling. And then the crowd was booing because it was a really good game for the end like that with a controversy. So I, I was, but more importantly, I was proud of the way Christian played. He played really well and, yeah. Um, they lost on a, you know, and I think Columbus is ranked like number nine in the country. So, yeah, something. Where is where is Harvard Westlake ranked? Uh, we're we were at that time we were like twelve, I think twelve or thirteen. Okay, so, okay. yeah, nice. but we should have won that game. So, is that where you were then on New Year's Eve? You were in Portland. Well, we tr- we traveled back New Year's Eve. Then I came home, shit shaved, and showered. <laughs> and then went to work. <laughs> the three Damn. S's. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah the watch the Lakers S's. lose. <laughs> what else is new? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's um, we've got we got a lot to talk about. One of the things on on the sheet today because it's been popping up all over the place is people yeah. are kind of sideways with Darvin for kind of continually tinkering with that Lakers lineup. Um, yeah. you know, with guys out, guys in, guys out, and you know the the rumors flying around that you know for some reason Torian Prince and um, uh, who the hell else somebody uh, somebody else that was being bantered about having longer leashes than some of the other guys was weird to me. Oh, Cam <laughs> Reddish, uh, oh, yeah. like that they're on like they get they can they could screw up a little bit more and get a longer leash, but you know Rui and Ar and, and D'Angelo are much shorter. You know, and it's just weird to me the way that he that this continues to change. Well, think about it like this. The only two guys that have either a very long leash or no leash at all, we know who those two guys are. It is LeBron and it is AD. Those are the two franchise players. Those are the backbone of the franchise. Um, those guys really have no leash at all. And yeah. other guys, obviously, depending on how favorable you are with Coach Darvin Ham and how you're playing – that leash is either longer or shorter. I mean, that's like that with almost any team. Yeah, that, I was going to say, that's like every, every coach is like that. And, you know, and the crazy part about it is, is I, I when they mentioned AR in that one and said his leash is short, it's a lot of times where AR gets cooked on on the defensive end and he's still in the game. You know, and, and, and the only one I see, in my honest opinion, with a really short leash is Rui. Because there's games where Rui is playing really well and he only plays 15 minutes. There's games he's not playing well, and he plays 35 minutes. It's it's crazy to me on how his minutes are up now. Oh yeah, I forgot about D'Lo. But sometimes wow. D'Lo D'Lo doesn't play, really play any defense. But my main guy is Rui, and I, if I out of everybody on that team, Rui is the only one that can really step up. And say, Yo man, what's going on with my minutes? I'm in, I'm out, you know. And that's the only guy I see on that team that should have any anything to say about his his inconsistencies in, in minutes. Yeah, I. Mm. We, we talk about this every year with the Lakers. 
at some point in time, uh, we know this game is a game of runs, but the Lakers are always going to be a name that pops up when it comes to the trade deadline because there's always something that needs to be fixed. You know, we came into this season, you know, adding guys to the guys that we already had coming off, you know, a bid in the Western Conference Finals. And we're like, okay, well, you add guys like Jackson Hayes. You add, you know, guys like Gabe Vincent, who we haven't seen at all this season. Um, You add those guys to what you already had from last season. Now you're looking like, okay, cool. This team is really going to be something. They're going to make some noise. And I'm not saying that they can't, but we're revisiting some of the same issues now Obviously, they won the in-season tournament. Cool. But we're revisiting the same issues now that we did at some point in time last season. And it seems like that's something that we're consistently doing. This team is not consistent right now. They're not winning the games that they should. I know they got a five what, a five-game homestand coming up. Yeah. And There's a lot of tough teams. <laughs> it is. But see, mm-hmm. this is a great test. And, and at least it's at home. But even with this team – I'm not so secure with them being at home. You know, you would think you want to defend your home floor if anything, but I'm being at home doesn't fix a lot of these these woes that they have. Yeah, I, I think the woes come from uh, no practice time. They take a lot of time off. Like the other day, they had a chance to practice. They took the day off, and it's like you cannot do that when you keep bringing people in and out of the lineup, and there's a lot of inconsistency in the lineup. And for me. I'm a big component of practice. Even if it ain't, you know, going full speed, it's about getting out there, talking to one another, communicating, because everybody don't have the same basketball IQ. So they're not on the same page. And 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 to back backtrack a little bit, the reason we talk about this is because of LeBron. You know, everybody wants LeBron to be, you know, on top of the mountain. And so every year we say, okay. He needs players to play with him because he's at the end of his road. He needs players. So that's why we don't, you don't hear any other teams around the league that says, oh, we got to do this each and every year. You think about the years that the Lakers were god awful, when it was like top three picks every year. Nobody talks about trades, you know, this and that, until they got AD and they got LeBron. It's, oh, we got to add this piece. We got to add that piece. At the end of the day, they've changed their life ever since the bubble cha- uh, championship. They'll change their roster each and every year, not with just one or two people, with multiple people, multiple people who was, you know, uh, those they counted upon to win the championship, you know, like KCP, like Caruso, all these guys, even the Caruso, all these people. But so we're going to always talk about we need to change the lineup. We need No, you need some consistency so these guys can learn how to play with LeBron because LeBron is not the easiest guy to play with because he does things that no other player on this planet can do. He breaks plays. He just goes down here, and you got to know where to get, so he'll know where to, where you're going to be at a consistent basis. How much value is in that starting five being consistent? I mean, like, I, and I know, like, there's, there's, like, I get what you're saying because it's like mm-hmm. you want to build, you want to build chemistry, you want to build pace, you want to know how guys play off each other, where they're going to be, and like you said, how to play off dynamic players like LeBron and Anthony and stuff, but. Isn't a head coach's job to always try to go, well, we're not, you know, we're doing okay here. We're not really, maybe we'd try a different version of the lineup. Maybe we get a couple different guys in here. Yeah, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a big, I, I love when a, a lineup is consistent because now guys kind of get into a rhythm because, okay, you look up at the clock, it's eight minutes, then your mind's right, I'm going in the game. And I think with this lineup, it's a big lineup. It's a defensive lineup. It's not an offensive lineup because let's be honest, you know, Cam is not the best shooter. You know, Vando is not the best shooter. And so with this lineup, it's like, okay, what are we going to do? And for me, if you're going to play this lineup, I'm fine with it. But have some consistency coming out. Who's next? Who's going to be first one out? AR, D'Lo, Rui, you know. But out of those three, though, I think they should start one and bench either, you know, Vando or, or Cam because that's too much defense for this lineup particularly. You know, even though everybody is shits on D'Lo, I'm going to put him in the game because you can tell how D'Lo is going to play in the first five minutes of the game. If in the first five minutes he's getting beat defense, he's not making his shots, you yank his ass. You put him on the bench, and then you, you go to the other lineup. So that's how you have to play this game. And I think there's certain players that's been throughout this league through the history in the first five to ten minutes of a game, you say, oh, that guy's on tonight. Oh, that guy is sitting on the bench. And they got, and that's what you got to be honest with yourself. And you got to be honest with the player. Like, yo, I'm putting you out there the first eight minutes. And you fucking up. You know where you're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have to say towards the, obviously, you know, with, you know, the trade deadline. We're in trade season now. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you have to say about the potential rumor about DeJounte, DeJounte Murray here in, in Atlanta? I saw that to, everywhere this week. Coming to <laughs> LA. I, I love DeJounte. I was shocked when the Spurs got rid of him. You know, and Spurs always get rid of really good players sometimes like that. And and, and I, I, don't, I haven't seen him enough in the East to see if he's still balling. Now, you guys can tell me. But mm-hmm. I like the fact that he's a you know quote-unquote two-way player, which I hate that term. He can play defense. He can play offense, and I think he can fit in. You know, he's a he's a poor man version of Shea, where he's that the length, the the, slot, the 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 build and stuff like that. So, I would love to see him how he could play with so you know on a team where he's the dominant guard, not where he's the backup guard. Yeah, he. Um, I mean, he can he can still get to the basket. Um, mm-hmm. Like I said, he's always top three, top five in steals. So he gets his hands in the passing lane. Uh, there have been times where he's gotten beat off the dribble. I'm um, like he's not a uh, he's not a, a bona fide defender, but he's a good defender. He gets a lot of steals. Uh, mm-hmm. He's tough. Uh, he doesn't back down from anybody. He has the attitude of someone uh, who you would want in your corner. You want a, you want in the foxhole with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's gonna give you everything that he possibly can. You know, game in and game out. And obviously, the Hawks aren't any good right now. And obviously, we'll see what they can do in the new year. And who knows if he's going to be a part of this team in the new year. We'll see. But um, I think whatever the Lakers are looking for, based off what they're saying they're looking for, he kind of fits that mold. Now, Mm -hmm. here's the thing. In order to get something, you got to give something. And I would assume that if if the talks are already being had or haven't been had and they're going to start, it's going to start around Austin Reeves, Somebody else and a first round pick. Yeah, I you know the problem with Austin Reeb is you know they love him too much here in L.A. You know he, every time you go around a the corner, there's a billboard of him, and so I don't think he's going anywhere. You don't and think if they so? Do, I, I don't think so. I think they love him too much. But you know, I will say this: Austin Reeves defensively has been getting beat a lot more this year than he has in the past. I don't know what it is, but uh, I, I don't, who knows though? You know. Uh, there's I, a lot of people who've been traded that you don't think would get traded. Here's my thing, though. I don't care how much the city loves a guy. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't think that carries a lot of weight. Yeah. I really don't. Because it's not like AR is selling tickets. You know what I mean? Like I'm glad <laughs> yeah. they love him, and I'm glad uh-huh. he's like a fan favorite. I mean, we've had those guys here in Atlanta before. We've had them all over the league where a team just mm-hmm. embraces a guy and loves him. And then it's like, man, when it's time, it's time. I don't care how yeah. many billboards you're on. I don't care how much the fans love you. You could be a fan favorite. But if you're getting cooked... And we need to use you as a piece to get a better player. We're going to do it. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know. Yeah. I just don't think it carries a lot of value. You know, I, I don't think people are coming to crypto to see AR. And, and, and I think <laughs> you know we'll see what moves are made because we always talk about the the Lakers are always involved in a lot of in any rumor when it comes to any every they're the, they're the top <laughs> betting line in every major trade. The they're NBA. still talking Lakers, about Lakers top landing place for, for Donovan Mitchell like anybody the name that pops up just right. becomes still yeah. talking about DeMar DeRozan still talking oh, about Zach on. Levine still talking about Alex Caruso still talking about those guys as well along with adding in a guy like DeJounte so the Lakers are going to be linked to anybody that, could, that they could yeah, potentially that put with LeBron and AD <laughs> But when I look at the Hawks roster, isn't if you get AR, AR and um, Bogdanovich is pretty much the same players. So yeah, why but, would you have but but think about the it players. is they can move Bogey to the because Bogey's coming off the bench. Uh huh. Um, they I would I would assume that they would move Bogey to the starting lineup. Mm-hmm. Uh, with Dejounte now gone, you move Bogey to the starting lineup, and AR would then come off the bench. Okay. You know, AR would fit in. I think he would fit in in Atlanta just because he's from the dirty south. Where is he from? He's from Arkansas. Oh, I mean, I Look, we had our popular white guy in Kevin Herter for a while here. Oh, and we, real, moved on, we moved on from Kevin Herter. We'll bring in AR. Exactly. You, you need know? another one. We need, we need another little white kid to get behind here in Atlanta. <laughs> Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. 
Well, you know, since we're in the NBA, let's just kind of catch up quickly on the standings. We took last week off for the holidays. Um, since we've uh, we've been gone, man, it, it just just a lot of is it? It's weird to me that you know the the Celtics or the Celtics that the uh, Lakers had the run they had in the in season tournament, and they're sitting yeah. at five hundred. <laughs> you know, you're you right now. You're a ten seed. You're a play in team. Is, Barely. Do you do you find do you see them crawling out of that play in bracket at the bottom of the of the West? I, actually, I do, uh, because really? they've had a lot of games on the road. Um, they've only lost two or three games at home, uh, something like that. Um, so I now think that now, said, you're within like four or five games of the five, six seed. So it's not like you're eight, nine, ten games back. You know what I mean? Exactly. So that's what my so they can you know do pretty good with just next run of games at home and get some consistency, get some guys back from injury. I, I think they'll be fine because you know if you really think about it, there's no team. In the in the West, that's just running away with this this thing. So it's just, I, I'm all right with it right, right now. Right now, it's the Timberwolves mm-hmm. and the Thunder. Yeah, uh, and there, I mean, yeah, it's the one of the two, and then you got the Nuggets kind of right behind them at 24 and 11. Mm-hmm. Clippers are 20 and 12, uh, and the Kings are 19 and 12. And then the rest of the West yeah. is just kind of falls off from there. But um, you know, it's there's you're right. Nobody's really running away with it. Best record is only God five six games away from the the nine ten seeds. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's close, but I mean, I'm I'm gotta tell you, I think we talked about it briefly. Very surprised with how well the the Thunder are playing right now. Um, well, it, it, you know what I me? Mean? The Thunder has a good little quiet team. Um, they it, they remind me of a Spurs team. You know, small market. Nobody's nobody talking talks about, about them, them. and they yeah. just quietly win. But if you really, in, I think in a seven game series. They, you're gonna, you know, Shade is not gonna get all those fouls that he get. Think about it, he shoots twelve free throws a game. Yeah, yeah. He's not gonna get those in the playoffs. So that's the one. That's it's almost like the James Harden effect. You remember when James would be in the playoffs? He go to the line fifteen times, and all of a sudden the playoffs start. Yeah. The refs don't give him those calls, and he's like, "What the hell?" And so that's what's gonna happen to me, the OKC. And that's why I get my I get upset with the refs. It's like, call it like you're supposed to call the game. Don't give a guy all these calls just because, you know, he bumps in someone. He's he's a little bit more small than other guy. And you're getting the free throws. But, and, you know, the only guy that, that really gets that is Jokic. And I don't understand how that happens. But I think that's what – back to what I was saying about OKC. And they're, they're going to have a good run, but they're probably losing the first or second round of the playoffs. Well, I get we get to see them boys tonight because they're here in Atlanta. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. So to see, you know, Shea versus Trey – uh, and to see Chet really for the first time in person should be a good one tonight. Are, yeah. you, are you going down there? You best believe I'll okay. be down there. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, he's in the building for all this stuff. Um, in the East right now, man, it's the Celtics kind of just just trucking away at the moment. Um, they're twenty six and six. The Bucks are twenty four and nine right behind them. The Sixers are twenty two and ten. Everyone else is kind of bunched up between the four and the eight seeds. Um, for me, one thing I was really surprised by when I looked at the standings. How how far back the Suns are? The Suns are the eighth seed right now in the West. Here's the problem with them. Really surprised by that. They barely they just got all their guys, their yeah, big three together, now. and yeah. started playing together. And then another thing is, they don't play no defense. No, <laughs> they're getting they're getting outscored. Yeah, they're just getting run, man. Uh, oh, just, hey, what you what you think about? It? It's like. It, Kevin Durant is their best defender on that team, and their you know, most really and their most about. durable player. Yes, yes. And so I, I look at the team. I look at guys that just want to get down and shoot. And and I think they only played what four games together so far. The big three, not much. And, then, like that. and then Bradley yeah. Beal end up spraining his ankle. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know if he's <laughs> is he not. I don't think he's back yet, is he? Mm, I think he was, he was back, back and then he left again. Oh, was he? He's been in and out, in and out like the yeah, last. Like, yeah, I watched the game where yeah. he sprained his ankle and he literally limped off to the locker room. And they talked about he was going to be out for like six weeks or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> that dude got hey, uh, hey, something about that city, Phoenix man. You go to Phoenix. <laughs> well, you in Phoenix, boy? Uh, yeah, man. no, no hesitation, no hesitation. Uh, I, that's weird, and I haven't I haven't dug in on on how Book's doing right now. But I man, it's been very quiet on the Western Front when it comes to Devin Booker. Not a lot of you people know, talking about Devin Booker right now. Well, you know why? It's because you know they haven't had the big three, so that's you know a topic. And then Kevin Durant has been out playing him, and yeah. and Booker has been hurt. I've seen a lot more Kevin, Durant than Book. Yeah, he's been more consistent, and I think that has a lot to do with it. And the only time you ever talk about Booker, even though you should. Is when they played uh, uh, Dallas, you know, Christmas Day because that of that matchup and how much him and um, Luca go at each other. So it's, it was, 
I think KD has really um, made that team his. You know, at first I thought it would be Booker's team, but KD's just too much of a talent for a team not to be his. I'm going to keep it all the way a buck with you when it came to Christmas because I know Christmas belongs to the NBA and to the NFL <laughs> said, watch this. Yeah. Guess what? When the NFL said, watch this, I went with – I love the NBA. Y'all know how much I love basketball. But let me tell you something. When the NFL started putting games on Christmas, they had four games. I don't think – outside of the early game on Christmas Day uh, for basketball, I don't think I watched any basketball the rest of the day. I was all yeah. locked in on football. But you know what's weird? That That's like a full moon. It fell on a Monday, and Monday is almost like the NFL's day. And so I don't think it's ever going to happen again. Because if it's next year on Tuesday, oh, right? If it's Christmas like a Tuesday, Tuesday or a Wednesday, forget it. Yeah, yeah, the NFL, NFL ain't going to put, play no, on no Tuesday. No. Hell hey, no. Even though they got, hey, if they got all these ratings, you know, let me just say that, if, you know, God rest his soul. David Stern, <laughs> he would call up the commission. Hey, man, hold yeah. on. You got Sunday and you got Monday. Give me a damn day. <laughs> I'll put it to you like this. It may not be Tuesday, Wednesday, but Saturday, Sunday, Monday and a Thursday, if Christmas falls on any of those days, oh, yeah. best believe there's football because why? Because football is on any one of those days anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and too, when you start to get into the Saturdays when college football is gone and yeah, now NFL starts bleeding yeah. over into Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they look, man, they're, they're smart. They grab as much real they're estate as they smart. can. Yeah. Because the ratings mean. always say no one gets tired. No one says there's too much football. No one, because the ratings don't show that. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Speaking of football, well, how, how, was your, how was your football weekend, huh? <laughs> <laughs> how was your football weekend? Hey, my football weekend was great. <laughs> was it? How? Mm. Yes. Because he didn't hey, claim them. You didn't, I, you're telling me you were in the back of your mind, the back of your head. You're just like, come on, man. Hey, punch no, it let in. Me say punch something. it in. I, you know, I was like, okay, Bama, I'm. Come on, win the game, Bama, so I can talk shit to my Michigan people. <laughs> and I'm in the back of my mind, I'm like, damn, if they win. I had five people call me. And number one was my mom. She's like, I haven't been to a football game in a long time. Oh, no. If they go to Houston, I want to go. And so I was like, shit, I got to take my mom. <laughs> now, I'm like, yeah, now I got to like- go. And, and then I told my good friend Troy, who, who, who's – um, he went to Washington. I said, you know what, man? It, I, I – Watch the go, you can come. I was like, fuck, that's another ticket right there. I'm like, damn. I'm like, and then when Bama lost, I'm like, Shh, ooh, that just saved me about 10 grand. Rob's wallet was <laughs> like, hey. hallelujah. I, yeah. yeah. I, I, think, I think about the hotels, the travel, the tickets. Mm-hmm. I'm like, ooh, man, that saved me so much money. <laughs> I was so disappointed. Because I, I was I, once Bama got in, I'm ro- I was rolling with the tide all the way through. Yeah. And I was so disappointed because this team did not look like the team against Georgia. Oh, no. This looked they like the team not. in against September. Yeah. Yes. This is the team that yeah. lost to Texas. I yeah. got to mm-hmm. give it to Michigan. Michigan they was bullying whooping them. Alabama's offensive line they ass up and down the field. bullied the hell out of them, man. Yeah. Yeah. And – Hey, I, when I watched – hey, uh, it's so weird when – if you – I was watching the game, and I don't know shit about football, but every time – Melrose was within four yards of you know of the snap. His ass was getting sacked, but when he was like five plus yards and back further, where he could like you know have more room to step up or evade yeah. the defense, they were successful. But every time I like fuck, he gonna get something bad's gonna happen. That that defense was making that offensive line go back four or five. And think about it, the offensive line for Alabama is three fifteen plus. Think about it. they had the bigger they got a bigger offensive line than got most NFL, NFL teams. teams, yeah. And yeah. they was just like that edge. Uh, it was getting beat on that edge a lot. What it was is uh, I got to give it to like I said I got to tip my hat to Michigan's defense. They confused mm-hmm. that offensive line. Uh, yeah. It's hard to when you you know run a lot of delayed blitz and you bring in a 
stunt blitzes from all over different crossing different over. Sides. It yeah. is it becomes it gets very confusing for an offensive lineman because now do I have to help this guy over here? And then that leaves one guy unblocked. Right. And now before I turn around, Jalen Milrose on the ground. Else and yeah, yeah. yeah, there was a lack of communication, but it was also um, uh, a great scheme by Michigan. And I gotta, but, I gotta tip yeah. my hat to him. But you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a jump on Dallas Turner's uh, bandwagon right here. Pass know, he, did not, he did not blitz one time. They was asking him after the game, like, yo, why didn't you blitz? So why didn't you get any sacks? He says, I do what I'm told. And you could tell he was pissed off that he didn't have the opportunity to, to go after that quarterback. And yeah. so here's the only thing that really pissed me off. But I love a good game. I love a close game. Too. Take me to mm-hmm. overtime every every time. I love it. Mm-hmm. What pissed me off was the Milrow call at the end because oh that was terrible. Michigan called timeout. Alabama called timeout. So you had two full timeouts, <laughs> and that was the play you called. Now, I don't know if that was the play that was called or mm-hmm. if Milro it was was just – it wasn't the play that was called? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Terrible play call then. Yeah. That's, an, that's, a, was that's a straight, to... horrible play call. No motion. Uh, no, no, I mean, no, no attempt to, to follow. do – Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, Michigan yeah. blew that up, and they'd been blowing it up all day long. You, so you know, why his... is that the call? But here's my let's, – let's go back to overtime, all right? Here's my my opinion. And like I said, I don't know shit about football. But you know your the offensive team just drove down and scored, right? Oh, yeah. The senior overtime. They're hot. Your defense needs a break. You get the coin toss. You should have gone offense I, first. Yeah. I want to go on offense. Get me in. Yeah. I want to be on the they offense. They wanted the walk end. off. They wanted the sexy. Yeah. They wanted the we're yeah. gonna we're gonna score. We they wanted second and twenty six yeah. against Georgia yeah. in the national championship. Yeah. Yeah. They wanted I, the walk off. I wanted I wanted the ball first. I, I I don't understand. I would love to talk to Dabo because you know big shout out to Dabo because he sent me a bunch of you know gear for Cade, my grandson. So thank you, oh, that's Dabo. Cool. And so and text and, and you Bama, reach out. And Bama has Dabo never on. sent me any gear for nobody, not even me. But <laughs> reach out to Dabo and let's let's see if we can have him back on the next few weeks. Oh, okay. I know he's but probably busy, but you yeah, know we'll we'll, we'll see if we can't. Yeah, I know. Let's see if we can't yeah. get him back on though in the next maybe the yeah, next I would month love or so to get because his opinion about that there's too, a so. lot of, and there's a lot of stuff in college football mm-hmm. right now and and God knows we played the audio from Dabo of him yeah. ripping that collar uh, yeah. about the NIL stuff so there's a there's a lot of interesting landscaping in the to college football now that we didn't have the first time I, we talked to Dabo yeah how um, good is that how good is that Dr Pepper commercial though. He said when he says about the portal, the door, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. portal. Yeah. it's oh, out yeah. of control. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. right. They're spot on with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, um, but you know, I but no give big shout out to Washington. That uh, Penix man, yeah, you know, watching Michael him rip Penix. that thing. Oh my goodness! And you know, he's it makes had you good and bad guess. games all year. That yeah. was one of his better games, man. Yeah, when you make your second guess at highs, but he like going to go out and say, you know, me against the world and whatever everybody's saying. He he was ripping that bitch, and mm. yeah. uh, he's he's really good, man. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, as a guy that was a transfer who, who was at Indiana first, went mm-hmm. through a ton of in. I think he went through two ACL surgeries, something yes. like that. Yeah. You know, dislocated his throwing shoulder, broken arm, going through so many. So <laughs> he was many the operation guy at one point. Yeah. Yeah. To then go to Washington, bounce back, and now he has his Undefeated. team in the national title game. Yeah, he I, I, I'm, in the look, last year of the Pac-12, too. Yeah. By the way, and yeah. I'm rolling with Washington one because um, I'm. I don't know if I think Michigan's going to win. I'm. That's rooting, fine. I'm rooting for Washington. I'm, I'm rooting for Washington. Now, I, look, the way John Harbaugh got these boys playing, this is his best chance. I, oh my! Because look, look, hey. if he wins, he's gone. You think so? Yeah, I think he's going to the NFL if he wins. I think if he loses, there's a better chance he stays. But it's, even if he loses, I think he's gone. I don't think nobody's going to touch him. I think the Chargers oh. will. You think the Chargers mm-hmm. will? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, I, you know, let's, you know, here's the Maybe. thing. We always talk about sometimes when the offense is so powerful, we forget about the other team's defense. Mm-hmm. And uh, that number nine for Washington. Yeah. That motherfucker, woo! He be, hey, he's the bad boy, man. We don't talk about him enough, so don't discount Washington's defense. Right. They got some, they got some dogs over there, and so, and if you look at the way Michigan, Michigan, that running back they got is something special. They oh, got Corum. two of Corum, Blake Corum, Blake yeah. Corum. We gave him big but, shot of the week a few weeks ago for feeding uh, half the yeah, damn city at Arbor with on Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, he's, I, I, is, this is gonna be a good game. So I hope I it think, is. 
I, really I think do. Washington, because of the way they slang that joint, man, the way he was dropping those passes in on the money, oh, my goodness. He's, now, that's the thing, too. When, when he's on mm-hmm. and he's dialed in, he's he's about as good as – he is Heisman caliber. But he's had, I want to say, two, maybe three games this year where mm-hmm. that whole thing almost went to hell. Yeah. yeah. Penix. He's, he's had two or three – and it was like Oklahoma State was one of them, I think, where they came down to the final kick, and it was like they, they make this, yeah. they advance – so he's had games where he's he's not been great. Uh, he was exceptional when he needed to be against Texas. I thought Texas was going to give it to Washington, and nope, they were both. That was a great game. They both yeah, hung I in think, all I the way down. I had Washington in that game just because I, I thought Washington, all, the, the um, receivers were too damn good for the DBs of yeah. Texas. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. So well, uh, Michigan, Washington, I think we all – I mean, I think Michigan's going to win. I, I mean, I'm rooting for Washington. I just think Michigan, yeah, if they know. play the same – caliber of line play they played against Alabama, I think it's going to be yeah. really hard for Washington to find a group. Yeah. Hey, let's just be honest. The best team didn't even play. That was no, the Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia should have played. <laughs> Georgia showed you. Uh, by the way, if Georgia, Georgia wanted... Like, Georgia, I'm going to show y'all why I really believe this. I really believe if, if, if he wanted to, Kirby could have put up, up probably close to 100 points on FSU. <laughs> he, have, yeah. he, I mean, they cruised through the second half and scored 63. Yeah. And, and guess I'm what? like, man, if he would have kept his foot down, they would have been maybe 90, 95 points. And and and, and going back to the you know with Alabama losing, you got I had a lot of Florida State people, as you know, they were sitting up talking about. See, we should have been in. And I'm thinking to myself, dog. Y'all wouldn't have won either, either with your backup quarterback, no with your no. third string quarterback. You think you would have set up there and beat this Michigan team with your backup or third string quarterback? I think they would have rather faced Michigan than Georgia, though, because Georgia just embarrassed the <laughs> well, shit. Out I, of them. I will say this about Florida State too: they, they, they out. Their forty best players was on the sideline chilling. So, I, yeah. even though I know that probably wouldn't help, but but I think I think the chilling. I think the thing that came out was like both teams had I think it was seventeen or. Or 27. I can't remember what the number was, but both teams had the same amount of guys out, either yeah. <laughs> for injury or for NFL draft or for transfer portal. They both yeah. sat the same, were missing the same number of players. Now, different calibers of players, but the same yeah. number. Um, so, yeah, Georgia, that was just a total. I, I do kind of feel bad for FSU because that's my God. I mean, everyone knew they were decimated with injury and they had all these problems and all these guys were transferring out. Now you got to go recruit. <laughs> on the heels of getting a 63 burger put on you in the Orange Bowl? Oh, God. Like, hey, how do you open that conversation? We had a 63 burger. That's why we need you on our team. So yeah. that would never happen again. So that'll again. never happen again. <laughs> and you won't be able to play for a national championship, even if you win the ACC. <laughs> Come to FSU. What's your pitch? Oh, hey, terrible. Yeah. It's next, changing up. Next it's season. Pe- first season people. of the 12 team playoff. Mm hmm. And most of the teams are going to come from two conferences, the SEC and the Big Ten. Yeah, well, and I think there's going to be some ACC teams in that mix. Yeah, maybe one or two spots. I left. think you might get a couple ACC teams yeah. in that mix. It's um, going to be really interesting to see how this all folds. Well, okay. here's the thing. You're not going to be able to lose, to sneak in. You're not going to be able to lose more than two games. And they're going to look at the quality of those teams that you lost to. Well, it's the it's going to be the the battle of the two lost teams at the bottom of this play. Because yeah. your top four seeds get a bye, your yeah. your conference winners get a they'll get a bye. They'll get a first round bye. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's I'm dude, I'm excited. I like I love college football. Um, as much as I, I just, love the NFL, I love college football. So I'm excited. Yeah, me to, too. I love I'm just college. excited but to see the playoff expand. You know what I hate though? That three week, the four week break from bowl after season, baby. Yeah, it's too long of a yeah, break. Yeah, we play me. the SEC championship game, and then a month later, yeah. <laughs> we freaking play in the college football playoff. I'm like, you know, it's too. It's like guys get out of shape. Guys, you know, think about it. some teams take a whole week off. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sure yeah. they took multiple weeks. Yeah. Off. Yeah, and it's. Mm-hmm. I mean, and there's something to be said for momentum too. You know, yeah. you have momentum, mm-hmm. you're hot, you're rolling, let's go, and then you take three weeks off. Jesus. Uh, all right, well, there's a couple more things I want to get to, uh, a couple of NBA stories we, we've got to hit on real quick. <laughs> we'll do Big Shot of the Week, and then we're going to play uh, Walmart or Waffle House to start the new year, because that's just too much damn fun. Uh, did you take any exception, I didn't, uh, with the Ja Morant celebration? That's been getting all the buzz, where he, he did the whole rocket launcher thing over his shoulder after the dunk, and I'm like... Calm down, everybody. Just, just hey, everybody, hey, take I, a deep breath and calm the hell down. 
it's just funny when I saw that I said oh shit I said people are gonna go at him about that I'm like dude it's just a celebration and I, I, I was like hoping people just gonna ignore it but you know people can't ignore anything they always want to jump on something and, well, well, you know, for all the for all the <laughs> gun suspensions he should really pay attention dude he's in the moment leave it alone and dude. that's and, and that and is it's a, not like he pulled a gun out on the floor and was like wait I mean, no yeah just, and that's a little Come on. From a cultural perspective, that is a uh, like a dance that they do down in New Orleans or mm-hmm. somewhere, you know, in the deep south. Yeah. And so I I don't see a problem with it. Um, but I guess a little bit from the other side, the other side of the coin. I Have guess some self-awareness. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I, 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 I think it's a little too soon. Yeah. yeah, a little too soon. Yeah, yeah I mean, he's, um, but this is the first, second week back now. Third yeah. week back, whatever it is. Yeah, and I think you gotta kind of, in a sense, read the room just a little bit. Like if this <laughs> is something, you know, a year, a season or two from now, maybe so when the dust has settled. But you, you really kind of just got back, and and I'm not saying I have an issue with it because I don't. But you know, like people are once you're back. They're looking for any reason or anything oh. that resembles any the thing that got you suspended in the first place. Yeah. So See, it's he not, hasn't changed. <laughs> it's like, still the same. Right. Ah. It's it's oh so get rid get rid of him. He should be suspended more. He should take more time. He needs to go back to counseling. So you gotta kind of be a little bit wary of of those because you got <laughs> folks out there like that. Yeah. You know, it's almost like when the, you know I, I wonder what the NBA is gonna do because you know when people would do like this, like you know, like it's like off the net, yeah. you know, NBA really quit. Really, oh, can't do that. Like, you cannot do that as a celebration. So, I'm sure they're going to – they've sent down a note to say, yo, watch the celebrations because, you know, you don't need to be doing that. So, I guarantee he doesn't do it again. Mm. Yeah. Salute our boy Mario Elias. Bring back the kiss of death. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. That's all I need, man. Salute our boy Mario. Bring back the kiss of death. Let's stop with the yeah. – but did you have any exception when Quinn Ewers did it from Texas? <laughs> Because he got out there and did the uh, the John Morant celebration while they were playing Washington, and every and then John Morant responds to it on Twitter with just the laughy face emoji, and it's like, oh, now all of a sudden it's fine. Yeah. Now all of a sudden it's okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A little, little bit now. of a double edged uh, sword there. Yep. No, 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 there. Uh, black crime or white crime? No, sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, let's 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 look at the. Uh, I just want to hit the MV, uh, the MVP ladder real quick, uh, and then we'll do big shot of the week, and then Walmart or Waffle House. Uh, your new front runner for MVP, according to betting odds right now, is Joe Embiid. Um, he's been playing exceptionally well. Thirty-five points a game, almost twelve boards a game. Uh, Jokic is, again, right there behind him, 26 points a game, 12 and a half rebounds, nine assists, uh, bordering on that triple-double average. But then then you get this kind of break from the next group. Like, those are your two front runners right now. Mm-hmm. Your next group is an interesting group, though. Shea, who we talked about, mm-hmm. uh, 31 points a game, five and a half rebounds, give or take, 6.3 assists, uh, two and a half steals. Then you get Giannis in there, about 31 points a game, 11 rebounds. And then Luka Doncic, who's been just blowing the doors off for Dallas, even though they're like four and six in their last ten. Uh, he's at thirty, almost 34 points a game, almost nine rebounds a game, nine assists per game. So he's starting to kind of border in that triple-double territory. I got a question. Territory. Who's the number one team in the West? Uh, that would be Minnesota, I believe. Why is Anthony Edwards getting no love in the NBA? I know. I haven't seen him on any lists. I've seen him like six, seven, eight, like floating in there. But you're to that right now. He, betting odds, those are your top five. He is the look. No disrespect to Cat and you know uh, Rudy and those guys out there, but Ant is. I mean, he's coming to this <laughs> season blacking out. Mm-hmm. Like he's playing on another level. And we saw this in the summer uh, on the FIBA team. And then we're coming into this season. He picked up where he pretty much left off. He has been balling. And he he's the main catalyst for why this team is sitting as a surprise as the number one team in the West. Yeah, sometimes we, we, we I think they get caught up in like, oh, these guys, these guys. And you think about it, even though Shea was balling out last year, he didn't get the love until this year. So this is how it's going to do for Ant-Man. Ant Man's gonna ball out this year, and everybody said, "Well, we forgot about Ant Man." And then you are gonna put him up there with the same five because think about it: how many times do we come into this season where we already so this guy's gonna win the MVP, this mm-hmm. guy's gonna win the MVP. Yeah. So now I'm, I, we get tunnel vision, and I think it's it's wrong in the sense that you just block out everybody else. 
And at the end of the day, it's not about who's averaging 30 points. Because everybody in that is averaging 30 plus points. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Ant Man is only averaging, I think, like 26 or 27. So that's why we get caught up in the points so damn much that it pisses me off. Yeah. But of all it's those about, guys, who's, who's a team sport. And you keep Ant Man in this conversation. Mm -hmm. Who's doing the most for their team? Isn't that isn't that really the 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 metric? Yeah. Um, I I can't. You can't take. I mean, obviously, you can't Luke take Joel been, Embiid. Right, but Luke has been incredible. But Dallas has been. Eh. And you can't take it away from Joel because obviously, with no James Harden, you have Tyrese Maxey there. Joel Embiid has shoulder in the load. Yeah, he is more or less. Yeah. But Maxey is you know Maxey is back. I mean, no, he's, yeah. no, he's, he's playing he's well. Yeah. Yeah. So let's say. If you if the thing is if you take MB Jokic and Ant Man off those teams they all lose immediately. Yeah, you yeah. know I, out of those three teams though I think the one team that can win would be Denver, you know. But the rest of those teams they won't win, you know. Yeah, I I think I really think the way Ant Man is playing, yeah, because Cat is cool, but he this is not wasn't his team. It, and wasn't it what was it a year ago or two years ago we had this conversation about what the hell's going on in Minnesota? Wasn't yeah. it? Wasn't it recently? <laughs> yeah, that we were like, man, they got all these guys, they got all these stars, they can't tie their shoes, and they you know gave I mean? up so much to go get Rudy Gobert, and they're right. like, well, they have no draft what capital at all, and now here they are, the runaway surprise team right now, and it came on the heels of Ant Man soaring and getting to the next level. But here's the thing, though, you got a lot of guys who flat out know how to play this game. Let's take Mike Conley for instance. He's the quarterback of that team. He gets them settled down, yeah. and he's that voice for them. And then you got what's the guy who always kills the Lakers, Nas Reed. Yeah, oh, yeah. he, you know, each and every night he might get you a double double. You know, he's been playing really well for those guys too. So you know, you you, you when you look at the bench and the teams that the guys that come in, they got guys who come in, they know their roles, they do exactly what they knew, need to do, and they're very disciplined. Mm -hmm. And when you got a guy like Gobert back there, it allows you defensively. With those guys who can play defense, even if you didn't have Gobert back there, to push up on their uh, offensive players and funnel them towards Gobert. So it makes it very hard offensively for those teams to mm -hmm. score on um, a Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, imagine that. A big man anchoring the center of your defense. <laughs> it's incredible. It's like it's never happened before. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandslots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Uh, all right, let's do a big shot of the week, and then we will Walmart or Waffle House up in this thing. Uh, big shot of the week is going to go to a, a young woman named Demi Murphy. She's a three-year student nurse at Royal Liverpool University in England. She was driving to work over the Christmas break after lunch and noticed a man, a man's car in the middle of the road. She ran over to the car and noticed the man, whose name is John McCown, uh, wasn't breathing. He was unresponsive. His wife had called. She picked up the phone. Something's going on with your husband. She found out he had a genetic uh, heart defect. She got him uh, an ambulance. She performed CPR. She got him a pulse uh, because she was a nursing student and got him on uh, to the hospital where he was on life support and in intensive care. And now he's on the mend. And the guy's alive. And he got to spend Christmas with his family because this girl was had the for the for somehow the wherewithal enough to not just pass by. That's what's to up. stop yeah. and go. Something's wrong. I'm a nurse. Maybe I can help. And yeah. just that awareness saved this man's life. He's got two young kids. Uh, he's going through, I believe it's like a quadruple bypass or something right now to Ooh. fix his heart defect. So he's alive, and he got to spend Christmas with his family because of young Demi Murphy, a, uh, a nursing student in England. So big shot to you, young lady. That's dope. That's what's yeah, up. That's, that's a really big shot because, you know, a lot of us to see a car, we just zoom right on by. Dude, I can't tell you, you how know, many so. times like something is, you, and, and it happens a lot. And I, I don't know if I'm a bad person for this, but it's like you see something like that, like a car is stopped or something's happening where you're like, part of your brain goes, "Do I, do I, do I jump in here? Like, is this, am I supposed to go out there and try and?" Or most of the time, I just kind of go, "All right, uh, yeah, no, I'm just gonna leave it be." And go. I, I think you know a I mean? lot of it has to be because you know we have a lot of time where it's a setup. 
you know, as a setup where oh, you well, can get, you, you know, you probably have you to can get that, robbed or yeah. something like that. And, you, you know, and then sometimes when you help people in this country, they turn around, they sue you. Oh, that and so all the because, time. You, you know, yeah. so it's it's just, you know, we 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 think so negative when it comes to certain things like this, where we like, you know what, I'm gonna mind my damn business and keep it moving. Yeah. So I don't know. Whatever this is, don't drag me into it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Has that ever happened to you, by the way? Because I'd imagine that as an NBA player, it, with some sort of celebrity status, you have to be aware of the situations you walk into sometimes, where you've seen something or done something and been like, yeah, I don't know about this. This feels well, like it might be a setup. It was this one situation where me and one of my friends was sitting at a, at a restaurant or a bar, and the young lady asked me for my autograph, and I gave it to her, and her boyfriend came over and snatched her up and pushed her down and said, I told you I'm be talking to all the fucking dudes. And he threw her out the door. And me and my buddy was like, do we help? And then the guy, the bartender was like, no, he's a known gangster. Don't fuck with him. And so we're like, should we call someone? He says, we already called. And I was like, man, when the, she's outside getting beat up. And I'm like, dude, do I go help? Or do I put my life at risk to hurt, help this girl, me and my buddy? Yeah. And I was like, I was almost, I was almost in tears because the girl was like, what do I do? Do I risk my life to save the stranger? Right. And they were like, and the bartender said, don't do it. And that's the only reason I think me and my buddy didn't help. And then the cops came and arrested him. But it was one of those situations where you like, what do you do? You know, and as a man, you want to help this young lady. But the bartender said, no, that's a known gangster. He might be carrying. Right. You know, so that was one. I was like, fuck, what do we do? That's a tough situation. I was younger, too. Yeah. I wasn't old. This was when I was younger in shape. And, you know, I could probably, you know, do something to help the young lady. But it was it was that's the I I felt so awful, man. You feel helpless. You know, it's like it it was so many people and the guy in the rest like, don't don't get involved because he knew to do. And uh, a lot of people in the restaurant was just like, don't get involved. You might he might shoot you. So, and that's the thing, like, for that's a tough predicament for any guy to be in because obviously you wanna you wanna help and you wanna do mm-hmm. something, yeah. but then on the flip side, if that dude does have a gun or he has a knife, and something happens to you, now you're thinking about the family that you have that could be losing exactly. you, yeah. and mm-hmm. it's great that you stepped in and helped, but now it's like, dang, now your family is without. A husband, without a father, yeah. without a brother, without a son. You know what I'm saying? So it's it, it, yeah. it's a boy. It's a tough place to be in. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, it's but a really also tough too, place. the minute that you step in, yeah, and someone finds out that you're Robert Ory. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? NBA champion Robert Ory. He got <laughs> money. Oh man! All of a sudden, I got injuries I didn't have before, and no, uh, I think <laughs> exactly. he took my wallet. Like you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like I'm gonna end. Yeah. And I remember, man, Shaq used to tell us those stories where people would try to pick fights with him. And yeah. he's like, he would it's, tell it's hard, almost man. almost all the time. He's like, man, somebody's pushing me and trying to pick a fight with me because they got a buddy somewhere with a camera phone or yeah. something <laughs> that's trying to catch me on camera, whooping some guy's ass, <laughs> and then try to extort me for a whole bunch of money. Yeah. So yeah, it's like, it's you gotta, hard, man. it's, man, I can't, dude, that's so hard. You can't just step in and do the right thing anymore. It sucks. All right, well, listen, let's have some fun. Rob spent a little bit of time in the dirty south. <laughs> um, I love and, uh, dirty, dirty. Uh, yeah, Rob, Rob, born, raised in the dirty, dirty. Uh, so, of course, uh, we, I mean, come on, we wouldn't it wouldn't be a new year if we didn't get a little Walmart or Waffle House in to start the year. Uh, and I was we we did black crime or white crime for the holidays, so I had to do Walmart or Waffle House to start the new year because that's at least upbeat. Uh, all right, you know the deal. I'll give you a wild story. You just got to tell me if it happened at a Walmart or at a Waffle House. Story number one. Uh, Police arrived to investigate a stolen truck at this property, only to find out it had simply been moved to the other side of the parking lot, where the couple, (laughs) where a couple who did not own it, were having sex inside of it. (laughs) This was was relatively easy, I think. I would think. Okay. Walmart or Waffle House? Unless this is a trick. Yeah, I'm gonna say Walmart too, because because a Waffle House parking lot ain't big enough. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, Walmart. that was Walmart. Good call. Yeah. Kind of yeah, listen to the clues. Yeah, listen to the clues. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, I mean, if you move it across the the Waffle House parking lot, it's right like, there. It's four spaces. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like it ain't going nowhere. Mm. Uh, very good. Uh, by the way, so if you're gonna, if you're gonna move, move somebody's car to another side of the parking lot to, to have sex in it, like, bro, get a room. So, were they having <laughs> sex in the cabin or in the bed of the truck? That's what I want to know. Oh, I don't and know. Were they black or white? Was it a white? Oh. Crime black crime. So is it a white crime or a black crime at a Walmart or a Waffle House? Walmart gotcha. or Waffle House. <laughs> We've made the game too complicated now. 
Uh, all right, let's go to uh, let's go to story number two. Police were called on an elderly couple after a physical fight broke out between them because the old man smiled and waved at one of the female employees. He said it was because he knew her, but his wife got mad because he smiled, and that's how he flirts. No charges were filed, but cops had to show up to break up a fight between two old people at a Walmart or a Waffle House. That's a Waffle House. <laughs> it's got to be a Waffle House. Um, because the but then man. again, more cute girls do work at Walmart than a Waffle House, but I'm going to stick with a Waffle House. Okay. <laughs> this sounds... you, you throw the word cute around very liberally. I'm just letting you know that. Because yeah. <laughs> we've been to both these locations. Not a lot of cute people. I'm a, this sounds very Waffle house E. <laughs> so I'm gonna go. I'm I'm gonna roll with Waffle House. All right. Uh, well, you're both wrong. It happened at a Walmart. Dang it, it happened at a Walmart. Because mm. Walmart. old folks See, do be going to Walmart. That's where all the cute girls are, man. All the cute girls are at the Walmart. That's where the that's where the babies are. I should have changed it. I should have changed it. <laughs> all right. Uh, story number three. A customer and an employee of this location held up other customers as they were busy sharing a bonding experience. It seems that they both spent time together in the same prison. So, customer and employee, Walmart, both in jail, both in the same jail, and had a little Waffle bit of a bonding house. experience. Whoa, whoa, you said what? Waffle House. As they were busy sharing, they held up other customers. Waffle House. I'm gonna go Walmart. The point goes to Robert Ory. It was a Waffle House, yeah. Yeah. Dude, Walmart she wasn't got serving her other man. tables because she was talking to this guy about being in the Walmart same jail. Walmart don't hire convicted felons. Come on now, Walmart got good. Uh, oh, they good don't benefits. do they? Come on now. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, I, hold on a minute. Hold not? on a minute. You're telling me <laughs> that no convicted felons ever worked at a Walmart? <laughs> I'm sure they have, but you these, know. I'll tell you what, these L.A. WalMarts, man. I don't know. <laughs> down here in the dirty, dirty. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Well, all they never mind. I wasn't gonna be saying. I'm gonna leave it alone. I, I gotta know when to be quiet. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna try to do that. No, I'm not gonna do that in 2024. Not on this show. In real life, yes, yeah, but not on this not show. Not on this show. Hell no. Otherwise, you're <laughs> off the show. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. Uh, all right, a customer at this location in story number four pulled up to a parking spot only to find a dead chicken laying in it, feathers and all. According to the customer, it looked like it was rotting. So she parked in another spot. Then a woman arrived, picked it up, threw it in the back of her truck and parked in the spot and went inside. So holding a parking space with a dead rotting chicken at a Walmart or a Waffle House. Uh, man. You know, you see a lot of wild shit in Walmart, so I'm gonna have to go with the Walmart <laughs> because all, it, damn near every parking space at a, a Waffle House is good. So I gotta go with a Walmart on this. Okay. One. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Walmart. Uh, it's gonna be a point for both of you. Yeah, Rob's analysis is very good. Almost every spot at a Waffle House is a good spot. You're not wrong. We talked about that in our previous story. You go four spots away, you're still right there. But it'll, by the way, at a Walmart, I don't know if you ever tried to park at a Walmart like when it's busy. You gotta, uh, you gotta walk like three miles, man. Yeah. Like them, those Walmart parking lots go on forever. It's like Disneyland. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, just, you park somewhere and then you walk for 20 minutes to get to the end. Man, let me just say, I was just in Portland. I probably saw the nicest Walmart ever. It oh. was all lit up like a freaking Neiman Marcus. It was like really, really nice. <laughs> the hell's going on in Portland? Yeah, it was like brand new nice. <laughs> oh, Portland, y'all got uh, some nice Wal uh, Walmarts there. All right, uh, let's, let's go to story number five here. <clears throat> Two employees in Arkansas decided to wash their hair in the back room during a slow shift at this location. They filled up a pot with boiling water. One woman soaked her hair in it. The other woman dried her hair with a towel. They were caught by uh, their boss, sent home. So uh, shower time in the back room at a Walmart or a Waffle House. Oh, this sounds very Waffle House. -y. Two employees in Arkansas decided to wash their hair in the back room. Uh, slow shift. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Waffle House. Huh? Well, where's Walmart from? Arkansas. So, due to the okay. fact it's from Arkansas, and use a slow shift, and you're in the back, 
these are the reasons I'm coming up with Walmart because there is no back in Waffle House. Well, <laughs> there is a kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> the kitchen's right there in front of you. <laughs> There's a back. There's always a door yeah. at a Waffle House. I'm going, I'm going to Walmart just for this because it's Arkansas, and that's where Walmart's from, Arkansas. Point two. Be dog Brandon Harper. That was, that was very Waffle House. <laughs> yeah, because... Yeah. Girls washing their hair in boiling water. We can boil water in the back room of a Walmart. What time of the day does Walmart ever have a slow shift? In early in the morning? Hey, I've done a lot of stuff for Walmart, and if you go in the back, they got like little cooking stations in the back. Oh yeah, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, but there's a back room at Waffle House. I mean, it's it's that one brown door yeah. next to the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the hell is in. It might be the doorway to Narnia. I don't know what the hell's in there. But it's like that guy goes out. He comes out with like three pounds of chicken, and I'm like, I, I, something's back there. Something I don't know what it is. But all right, story number six. Police were called to this location after a woman had an altercation with her child at this location. The mother seemed to <laughs> fart loudly. But it was only when her child called her out for it in front of other people that the woman started to beat her kid in front of everybody. Yeah, so they had to call the cops because the woman was beating her kid for calling her out for ripping a fart at a Walmart or a, a Waffle House. This is a black crime that happened at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a Walmart. <laughs> uh, happened at a Walmart. Happened at Walmart. Very nice. Boldy, you made a point. I won't comment any further on any other topics brought up, but we'll just say Walmart. Uh, one Black cry, white cry. <laughs> All right, uh, last story. Uh, one customer's four-year-old child got life-changing advice from an employee of this location. The employee reportedly told this four-year-old child, once you get a tattoo, you'll wind up in jail because it gives the police an identifying mark to find you. So when you do something stupid, they track you down and you wind up in jail. So, sage life advice not to get a tattoo given to a four-year-old at a Walmart or a Waffle House. Well, you sitting there Don't having get your a waffles. tattoo because they're going to find parent, you. As a parent, you have having waffles with your kid. You know, this the, the, this person, it got to be a Waffle House. It, be a waffle I love the investigative work you're doing this week, by the way. You're really <laughs> spending time. I, I enjoy it. Yeah. I think this comes from a place of experience from somebody who has the tattoos <laughs> and exactly. who has been to jail. Yeah. And more times than none, the Waffle Houses aren't good unless somebody done been to jail. <laughs> so it's a Waffle House. And a strong investigative work by both of you. Yes, it was. It was a Waffle House. Very good. Yeah, no. Because hey, and, and, all these tied into one another today. They really <laughs> did. Kind of way. Honestly, I think the food is better at Waffle House. It's being cooked by somebody who's been to prison. Yeah. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to Chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.